Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. A little while back, I picked up this 1985 Chevrolet Monte Carlo SS. It's a super cool car, a lot of fun to drive. It's not perfect, but it's in pretty original shape overall. It's nice enough to make for a great foundation for doing some build and restoration content. So I'm very excited to be bringing this to the channel. In this video, we're gonna kick everything off by installing a full stainless steel exhaust system, headers all the way back. Before we kick things off though, let me give you a quick tour and talk to you about some uh, general ideas I had for the project. This has just under 65,000 miles on it. Like I said, it's very clean, very original, not perfect, but you know, it's a good starting point. It looks like the car had sat for quite a while at some point and then fortunately was rescued and somebody started doing some work to it, but like it was repainted poorly. So that's gonna have to be rectified. The tires that are on it, even though they're the original wheels, the tire size is way, way wrong. They look like monster truck tires. So that's gonna have to be changed. I basically just wanna fix this up pretty good while preserving the original character, giving it a little bit of extra specialness, but try to keep most things period correct if I can. At some point when I get a chance to paint this thing, I want to add all of the full body striping. It just looks naked without it. These are the wheels that are currently on the car, but these are the tires that it should have. It just, it doesn't look right. But I've got a whole different setup that I'm very excited to show you guys in another video. So stay tuned for that. But underneath the hood, we have the factory 305 cubic inch high output V8. This thing made a whopping 180 horsepower at 4,800 RPM and 235 pound-feet of torque at 3,200 RPM. Factory four-barrel Rochester carburetor, four-speed automatic overdrive transmission. Now, zero to 60 took 8.4 seconds and it could pass a quarter mile in 16.1 seconds. Lateral acceleration was a uh, 0.82 G. <laughs> so definitely some room to improve without changing too much of the car's character. I do find it really funny that they broke this down. Oh, it, it does zero to 50 in it, it's six seconds. That's not bad, but 60. 8.4. <laughs> anyway, so the general plans for the engine bay and well, the engine itself. I do not plan on swapping this motor. I think it's a perfect setup for a cruiser just as it is, but we're going to spice things up a bit. In keeping the bulk of the upgrades period correct, I'm gonna be doing something to this car that was never offered from the factory, and that's installing a Chevrolet Tune Port fuel injection system. This is a multi-port fuel injection system instead of, you know, more traditional throttle body setup that was widely offered at the time. GM had several different multi-port systems available in the 1980s, depending on the year and the model and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But this is one of the more widely recognized systems. It was very cool and it had these beautiful runners that wrapped around and connected to the, you know, the top plenum or whatever you want to call it. It says tune port injection on top. It's just a very cool system, but I've got just about everything I need to do this. I'm waiting on a few more parts. Of course, I got to get all of that stuff cleaned and painted or powder coated, whatever. I've got a custom ECU with chip and everything to run, you know, everything based on how I've want to set the car up. It's just gonna be a really cool system and I'll talk about all this in greater depth in a future video. I just wanted to give you guys a sneak peek on what's to come. All right, let's get this thing outside, fire it up and hear how she sounds, then we'll get it back in here and start diving into the new exhaust.
The exhaust we'll be installing today is from Hooker Blackheart. The whole system is 304 stainless steel, so very nice stuff. I've actually used a lot of the Blackheart LS swap parts on some of my other builds, so I definitely wanted to try to stick within this family if I could, but being that we're not doing an LS swap on this car, they actually offer a set of headers for a small block that's designed to work seamlessly with the LS swap exhaust. So this is gonna be really cool seeing how it all goes together. And the headers actually have provisions for oxygen sensors. So if you were using a factory style fuel injection system like I will, or if you're going to an aftermarket setup like a Holley Sniper system, this would be perfect no fabrication necessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the car on the lift. My buddy Ed is gonna start unpacking the exhaust and we'll see what we have. So this exhaust is designed to fit all G bodies from 1978 to 1987, except for El Camino's. The biggest difference with the rear section compared to a factory style Monte Carlo SS system is that it doesn't have the straight exit tailpipes, but they actually offer a kit that you can add on to this exhaust that um, adds SS style tips. So these are gonna turn down at an angle behind the rear wheels. Of course, you'll see that later. I do have the SS tailpipe kit on order, but of course, like a lot of things nowadays, it was back ordered. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this fitted and then get the tips installed later and just show you guys in a, in a different video. But everything presents itself very nice detailed instructions, all the hardware to make this a bolt-on affair. It's definitely not gonna be easy, but they really took all of the guesswork out of, you know, putting in an exhaust system. I will say there is a required transmission cross member that you need to get for the proper clearance. I'll show you guys that in just a bit as well. You can see the O2 sensor bungs right there, one over there, one over there. It also comes with plugs. These headers, are one and five eighths inch diameter, and it goes into three inch collectors. It's a total slip on fit if you have a three inch exhaust system, but I went with the two and a half because I'm not really building the 5.0 or anything, so this will be plenty. And they offer reducers to go from three to two and a half. So this is gonna work out nice. The factory exhaust was not a true dual. You had this Y pipe here that went into a common collector underneath the factory transmission cross member, and then it split into the dual exit. So obviously we're gonna have true duals now, so we're gonna need to replace this factory transmission cross member. There's a hump over on the passenger side to make clearance for the exhaust, but with how this Blackheart exhaust is designed, there's just no room on the driver's side. So they make a bolt-in cross member replacement, so we're gonna get that down, support the trans, and swap it out. Here's the cross member if anybody was curious. There's the cutouts right there for the dual pipes. Depending on what transmission is in the car, they have different brackets to facilitate installation because they did different mountings and, and whatnot. So everything's outlined in the instructions, but just an FYI. with the old and with the new. That looks pretty sweet. Thankfully, there's actually pretty decent working space underneath the hood, but unfortunately with how cluttered everything was from the factory, there's a lot of stuff that I'm gonna have to take off just to get decent access to the exhaust manifold. So let's get to it.
All right, the factory exhaust manifolds are up and out of the way. What a crazy design to say the least, like all of the air injection piping, the EGR stuff. I mean, this was a seriously cluttered and bogged down motor with how just everything was choked up. But hopefully we should see some better efficiency and, you know, moderately improved gains once everything that I have planned is done and out of the way. That being said, I am working on cleaning everything up in here. I've got a lot of vacuum ports to plug off. Again, nothing here will be reused when I go for the tune port fuel injection system, but I at least want to make things a little bit more manageable and try to clean things up as best as possible. I went ahead and ordered new valve covers and just you know, proactively doing some, you know, different things here and there, but I've got enough room to go ahead and test fit this header, so let's go ahead and shoehorn it in and see how it fits. No luck from the top, let's try the bottom. That's more like it. As far as I can tell so far, the fitment is really, really nice. Everything has plenty of room up here. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of clearance and down below as far as just rerouting some of the lines, but they definitely look nice. Alright, this looks like an absolute mess right now, and it is, but for the moment everything is tucked up out of the way, nothing's touching the headers or anything like that. I'm going to go to O'Reilly later on and get some cut to length spark plug wires so I can actually route these properly and make it look really nice. And when I go to do the whole TPI conversion, I'll be able to clean this up significantly, redo the wiring, all of that, it's, it's gonna be quite nice. And it's gonna make a big impactful difference with the engine bay, but for right now, just kinda gotta get it by so we can get this done, I can enjoy it for a little while, and then plan the rest of the TPI stuff. So at this point, I'm ready to test fire it again. The only other major thing I still need to do is lengthen the wire for the oxygen sensor, which I'll do before I wrap up the video. But on this side of the engine, I had to modify this bracket for the AC compressor. It went all the way over the factory manifold. I had to cut a little sliver off and just bolt it in one side, but that's per the instructions. Towards the back, I had to get a 90 degree elbow fitting to relocate my oil pressure switch just because of clearance with that uh, pipe all the way back there. Over there was a bit simpler. All I had to do was remove the dipstick tube out and the header just slid right back in. I know sometimes installing long tube headers can be a bit of a nightmare, but thankfully this was pretty straightforward. I've got all of my vacuum lines capped off. Anything that was you know, removed beforehand is now buttoned up, so we shouldn't have any vacuum leaks or anything like that. So let's go ahead and fire it up real quick.
I've just run into my first fitment problem, but I think I've already figured out the solution. I mentioned earlier in the video that these headers have three inch collectors. Well, to adapt it to the two and a half inch exhaust, you need to get a pair of header reducers, which as you can see, I've already installed, but they seem to add about two inches to the overall length of the exhaust, which I'm pretty sure is why I'm having these fitment problems. I'm going to double check my measurements right quick, but it looks like I'm going to take a little bit of length out of the pipes that go into the mufflers. Well, it looks like two inches was the magic number after all. As you can see via the passenger side pipe, the axle is now almost perfectly centered within the bend. Whereas on the driver's side, the axle is still riding on the pipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut down and refit the driver's side. Then we can work on getting all of this buttoned down finally. All right, the exhaust is finished. I just tightened down the last set of clamps. I'm not gonna lie, those corner or angle exit tips look pretty sweet. I'm still waiting on the SS tailpipe kit. So, you know, like traditional SS, they can just exit straight out underneath the rear bumper, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna get them before the end of the year with how back orders are. So it does look pretty sweet as it is, so not too big of a deal. Before we get this thing started up and run through its first heat cycle, I'm gonna give the exhaust a good thorough wipe down to make sure all of the fingerprints and residual grease is gone. But even though it was a little bit more work than I expected between, you know, little things here and there, it turned out really nice. And I can't wait to hear how this thing sounds. I think it's going to be quite aggressive. There's a couple other things I want to make mention of right quick. So I replaced the factory rubber trans cross member mount with a polyurethane one. I also ended up replacing the motor mounts with polyurethane mounts. It's always a good idea to replace the mounts with a like material. If you're doing rubber, stick with rubber. If you're doing polyurethane, do polyurethane all the way around because the rubber and the polyurethane have different uh, you know, flexing tendencies. The polyurethane is a lot stiffer of a material, so you want to make sure the engine and trans are moving in unison with one another. If I didn't replace the motor mounts, the stiffness of the polyurethane trans mount would have ended up, um, you know, wearing out the factory rubber motor mounts a lot quicker. So it's just a good rule of thumb to remember. Something else to be aware of with this exhaust setup is that it will not work with a factory column shift G-body. So if you have a column shift, um, you'll have to get some kind of aftermarket shift lever, universal shift lever, or like a low car shifter or something. So it's definitely more work to make it work, but it's doable. Thankfully, this car is a factory floor shift, so I didn't have to worry about much. That being said, I am gonna have to remove the factory shift lock. So this device prevents you from pulling it into gear when the ignition is off. When you turn it to accessory power, I believe, it disengages the lock and then you can move the transmission freely. So with, it is, with how it is right now, I can't pull it into gear because this bar hits the pipe and stuff. So once I take that out, it'll still function like normal, just won't have the lock. Just wanted to throw that out there so anybody watching this video is aware of some of the other modifications you gotta do to make it work. Just ran into one more little problem I'm just gonna figure out later. That bracket in there is attached to the shift lock mechanism. Apparently, the gear indicator on the instrument cluster is also tied in with this and not with the shifter itself. So now that this is unhooked, I, my gear indicator doesn't work, so I'm not sure if there's a different way I can route the cable by going into the cluster and stuff. I, I, I have no idea, but I've been working on this long enough. I'm going to button it up, figure it out later. Moment of truth.
sounds pretty good so far. But another thing to remember when installing a new exhaust, there's gonna be oils and stuff on the pipes that are gonna burn off the first time you get everything hot. So it's important to do it in a well-ventilated area. So I'm gonna rearrange some stuff in here so I can get the car outside, run it properly, and we can get plenty of sound clips. <laughs> Well everyone, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm looking forward to diving further into this car, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because of course there's always a lot more content where that came from. Also, leave a like down below because it really helps the videos a lot and don't forget to make sure your notification bell is checked. I'll see you guys on the next one, take care.